Okay, so this tutorial is going to go over the grasshopper definition for generating your guys' self-portrait uh, using the definition that I give you, um, I've given you. And just want to pull this up. Uh, look, there's my ugly mug. Um, but this is not something that I uh, developed on my own independently. This came from the grasshopper forum. Um, and then uh, some examples of some of what you're going to see here um, to develop. So just to give you guys a sense of what this thing might look like at the end, in case you don't want to specifically look at my ugly mug, I just ripped an image off of Facebook uh, really quickly. And so this will be what you'll be looking at right when you pull this up. There's a couple of things you want to pay attention to uh, right at the start. Uh, the first thing, uh, you shouldn't really have to mess with these guys. Um, and so I've, I've sort of blocked them off so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is going to be separated, and you'll eventually plug that in. Uh, and I'll show you what that does here in a second. Uh, there's some boundary points, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, since I know you guys are new to Grasshopper, we can run that slider and that's going to set the number of subdivisions and the resolution on the edges of our image. Uh, and then we have our image resolution, uh, 833 by 790, okay? Uh, and that corresponds with, if you come on this guy and double click, that corresponds with our image in here. So if we were to go in here and say you guys are going to set up your own image, go find your image, and then if you just click this, it will set that to the image resolution so that um, essentially our proportions and everything will align when we go through that. Okay. All right, so then what we're going to be doing is uh, we'll just minimize this uh, and, well, I guess we can just start, start from the beginning of your grasshopper. Open that up, go file, open, you can find your grasshopper file uh, wherever you downloaded that. And then what we're going to start to do is just make this really big. We need this preview because then we're going to start to draw inside of it. Uh, and so if you just right click on the multiple points, uh, we're going to come in here and draw points. And we're going to actually just literally do uh, sort of a weird uh, paint by numbers in here, and you'll see what happens. So first we're going to give ourselves sort of a nice blanket to go through this. And you'll see what happens when we go. And you'll note that I have my snap disabled so I don't accidentally draw points on top of each other. Okay, so I zoom out and I'm going to select all these points and pull up my grasshopper definition and I'll just pan over to you guys and watch this update. And if we right click on the point here, we can set multiple points. Now, if we zoom in, you'll note all these guys now have little X's on them uh, to note that they've been uh, associated with our grasshopper definition. So I'll just go ahead and hide the actual geometries. So they're not in the, uh, they're still acknowledged in the system, um, and if we want to actually, turn, if we see this, select this now, you can see these turn green, we can just come over here and plug this in, and what that will do is that's going to create a nice little cracking pattern, uh, and if you scroll over, you can start to see the resemblance here of my ugly mug, okay, starting to appear in there, and what we can do here is, uh, so at some point, this is going to get kind of confusing, right, um, but if we select this and right click, we can turn off the preview for some of this stuff. And we'll right click and we'll turn off the preview for this. Uh, and now what we can do is we can look at the photograph and we can start to see where maybe we want some higher resolution, some greater subdivision. Uh, and that's going to be probably right around in here for me. And so I'll just right click. And I'm going to draw some more points. And this is going to be a really nice tool for you guys who want to get into sort of these nice sort of digital diagrams. Okay, so now I've increased that. Now we're going to type show to unhide all of our stuff. If we select this again, you can see there's a much higher density of points. And I've sort of discovered that this works a little bit faster if you just delete this out. Draw a new parameter point, right click, set as multiple points. You see that they're in there again. Plug those guys in. And we'll take this. And again, we're having trouble seeing ourselves. So I'll right click on this and turn off the preview. But you can see that this will start to come in uh, in higher, higher resolution. Now, if we scroll out, what we can do is this is uh, these last two sliders here. Um, hopefully you don't have to mess with them too much, but they are little color adjustments for our mesh. So we can take these guys and start to tweak this around. 
Alright, and we can start to see how this is going to start to form. And I, I probably need more resolution right around in here, probably more resolution right around in here where my glasses are so we can complete the frame. And then as you go through this, uh, you can actually delete some of the stuff to make this appear a little more fractured uh, in places as well. So we'll come in here and I'm just going to draw a few more. We'll do one more pass just so you guys get a sense and then uh, whatever the result is, we'll sort of accept that. I'm drawing my crap up a definition. I'm going to make this really dense so we can you hear my mouse clicking away. Okay. Now I'm going to do one quick thing because our grasshopper def definition might freak out if we have duplicates. So if you type S E L D U P, select dupe. Because uh, sign, no duplicates found. And I'm going to draw a little bit more over here. Okay. So I'll type show. We have all our points. We'll zoom back over. We'll go ahead and just, I'm just going to do this. But it doesn't matter. Set multiple points. Come here and hide. Plug that in. Turn off the preview. And look at that. It's starting to get a little bit closer. Still not super attractive, uh, but it's doing its best. Alright, so what we can do then is if you guys come over here to the end, this is actually going to be the thing that generates the mesh. You can right click here, and if you bake this out, uh, you can select the layer you want it to bake out on. We'll go layer five. All right, and then what that will do is if we zoom out, that actually creates the physical geometry here. So now, uh, for those of you guys that are new to Grasshopper and haven't really messed with this at all so much, you can actually get in here. So nothing actually exists existed up to this point. This is just previewing some geometries uh, that might have existed in here. And so you can start to see how you can start to create this stuff, but. If I try and select it, none of this exists. Uh, it actually does, sort of messes with our viewport. If we come over here, though, we can select the stuff that's baked out. Now, I know this doesn't look like all that much, but if we go into the shaded view, we see this sort of nice plane. And then you can come over here, and if we render that out, you can see that that actually renders out the image here. So what you guys can do is, because this is a mesh, that means it's defined by points, in 3D space, each one of these guys will be essentially behave like a, a vector graphic. So you guys can render out a really nice high resolution image by coming over here and going click on the cogwheel or go to render properties. And so if we come over here and go to rendering, oh, we're in a Rhino render. We can in increase the anti aliasing, so get better smoother images, and you can come over here and Set the resolution, you can set this to custom, and for what we're doing, we'll probably go some, don't go higher resolution than your original image, please, uh, when you're doing this, so we'll go something like, this is about square, so we'll go 2000 by 2000, and I'm going to create a 150 dpi image, because eventually I'm going to be taking this to print, uh, and we'll just do 300, because that'll hold it a little bit longer, 2100 by 2100, so 7 inch square image. Alright, so we hit OK, go into our top view, try to center that up as best we can, hit render. And it's going to think. All right, and let's pull up our current renderer here. All right, there we go. All right, so now we have a, that includes the, the sort of gray space around this. So we can come in and you can pull this into Photoshop and just use the magic wand to get rid of that border. Uh, so we'll go here and let's just go all the way through this so we can review some tools. 
So we'll save this out. Alright, and then we can come over here and hit Control O. Go to desktop. Find our image. Alright, and then we can use the wand tool. Oh, the caps lock is on. If you, just so you guys are clear, so if we have caps lock on and we have any tool selected, it looks like a little crosshair. If you turn caps lock off, it actually will represent properly. Control Shift I, Control X. And I'm going to hit create control N to create a new document. Just going to take all of our stuff out of here. I'm going to set the color to CMYK. Control V to paste. All right, and then we can come over here and do some image editing. View and saturation. So, say I want this thing to be a little bit lighter. I really want these colors to be pretty vibrant. And come in here and uh, really sort of make this thing sing. Alright, and then so that's going to be the assignment. So you guys can go through it and sort of have as much fun of this as you want. The idea here is that you can start to create an image density out of this and then really go uh, have fun with it. Uh, you can also, as you guys go through this, I would recommend you can come in here and don't be afraid to start to use some of the grid tools uh, or the array tools. Sorry. So we take a point and we type array. We can go 100 by 100. So we create a lot of points really, really quickly and space them all by like 5 by 5. Be careful when you do this. I just created obviously more points than I had in the entire project. Um, so then we can say the spacing is 25. Spacing is 25. And we accept. Now we have way more points than we need. And I'm just going to select these out. Oops. I'll lock that mesh up. So as you come in here, you guys can create a couple of versions really quickly. So say I'm going to go over here and I'll create a new point system. Right click, set multiple points. If I right click on this, I can disconnect the point. Our guy goes away. Plug in our other set of points in here. Hide these. I'll turn off the preview. For that. You can see that I get a little bit more normalized rendition of this. Okay. So you guys can play with that and, and really have fun. You can see like I'm getting a much nicer resolution of the airport that I was in when I took that photo. Alright, that's it.